The European continent has seen some significant political changes in the last decades concerning a rise in far-right anti-establishment and anti-immigration parties in most countries, the relating immigration crisis of 2015, the Brexit vote in 2016, and the following turmoil between the EU and the United Kingdom, as well as the Russian annexation of Crimea and the war in eastern Ukraine. In this series, I will try to take a look at the political leadership across the European continent and give light to the development in some of the countries outside the main news coverage in most major nations. In 1974, a coup in the Cypriot capital of Nicosia, supported by the military junta of Greece, led to Turkish forces occupying the northern third of the island, a move officially to protect the Turkish minority on the Mediterranean island that has led to the island being divided to this day. The internationally recognized government of Cyprus, controlling the southern two-thirds of the island, is led by President Nikos Anastasiades, head of both state and government. Cyprus is since 2004 an EU member state. Meanwhile, the government of the northern third of the island is only recognized by Turkey, and the division has caused tensions between Greece and Turkey, both NATO member states, and has been hindering the prospects of a EU membership for Turkey that has been debated for several decades. A UN peacekeeping force has been deployed, overseeing the buffer zone across the Cypriot island since the 1960s, entering its seventh decade this year. Since 1974, Greece, the ancient crib of democracy, is once again holding democratic elections. Up until the financial crisis of 2008, the politics of Greece was dominated by the liberal conservative New Democracy and the social democratic Pan-Hellenic Socialist Movement. After being hit hard by the financial crisis in 2008 and the following Euro crisis, Greece was left in economic freefall and in great need of support from the rest of the European Union. Years of austerity following the bailouts hit both the public and the private sectors hard, and left-wing Syriza came to power in 2015, led by Alexis Tsipras. The party rejected many of the demands from the European Union, but eventually had to accept the majority of them. During this time, neo-Nazi party of Golden Dawn rose to some success on an anti-EU platform in the 2014 European parliamentary elections and in the 2015 Greece elections but has since then lost most seats. Since 2019, Kyriakos Mitsotakis of Right of Center New Democracy is the Prime Minister of Greece. Small landlocked San Marino has only 33,000 inhabitants and is not a member of the European Union but uses Euro as its currency. The nation elects two captains regents every six months to act as head of government. The system is basically the same since the 13th century. Since the 1st of April 2020, Alessandro Mancini and Grazia Saferani holds the positions. Italy has been a part of the European Union since its foundation and is one of the major economic powers of the Union. Since World War II, the country has had a long list of governments, totaling over 60 by 2020. Since 2018, Giuseppe Conte acts as an independent prime minister, not associated with any party of parliament. He led a government consisting of far-right Lega Nord under Matteo Salvini, pushing for a Eurosceptic and anti-immigration agenda. And the more difficultly placed Five Star Movement, founded in 2009 and variously described as populist, Eurosceptic and environmentalist. Since 2019, Lega Nord has been dropped from the government and Conte now leads a government formed by the Five Star Movement and the Social Democratic Partito Democratico. Former Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi of the Forza Italia party, the longest serving Prime Minister of Italy since World War II, is still going strong in politics, currently as a member of the European Parliament since 2019. That after serving a six year ban from public office following a tax fraud sentence in 2013. The second landlocked country within Italy is the smallest nation in the world, Vatican City, with only 800 inhabitants. The head of the Catholic Church, currently Pope Francis, is acting as head of state and is elected for life. Notably, this is a rare case of a non-hereditary monarchy. The Vatican City 
is an observer state in the United Nations and uses euro as its currency despite not being an EU member state. Malta is an island nation in the Mediterranean with a population of half a million. Current Prime Minister is Robert Abela, sworn in in January 2020. He represents the Social Democratic Party that dominate in the de facto two-party system together with the right of center Nationalist Party. Malta joined the EU in 2004 and has since then joined the Eurozone. Small Monaco is surrounded on three sides by France and borders the Mediterranean with a coastline of just under four kilometers. It is a constitutional monarchy with Prince Albert II as head of state and in position of great political power. The prince is the current head of family of the House of Grimaldi, who has been ruling Monaco since the 13th century. Monaco is famous for, among other things, its status as a tax haven due to a lack of income tax and the yearly Monaco Grand Prix. The political system of Andorra, landlocked between France and Spain in the Pyrenees, is complex. The nation is ruled by two co-princes in the form of the President of France, currently Emmanuel Macron, and the Bishop of Urgel, currently Joan Henrik Vive il Sicilia, through representatives as head of state. While the heads of state have power in foreign policy and the similar, internal affairs of Andorra is governed by the Prime Minister, currently Xavier Espot Zamora, of the right of center Democrats for Andorra. Following the death of Franco in 1975, Spain has held democratic elections and joined the European Union in 1986 and later the Eurozone. Current day Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez was appointed after his party of the Spanish Socialist Workers' Party successfully ousted Conservative Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy in a vote of no confidence in 2018. He led his party to the most seats in Parliament after the election in April 2019, failing to form a government, and again in November 2019, finally forming government in January 2020. Spain has in recent years seen separatist movements gain traction in the autonomous regions of the nation, notably in Catalonia, a by the Spanish government and most of the outside world deemed illegal independence referendum was held in 2017. The results were overwhelmingly for leaving Spain, but the turnout was low. Several Catalan leaders have been sentenced for making the referendum possible, while others remain in exile. Talks between the Spanish and the Catalan governments has been resumed during 2020. Antonio Costa, the Prime Minister of Portugal, was sworn in in 2015 after forming a left-wing coalition with his Socialist Party as the largest component. This despite the right of center, confusingly named Social Democratic Party, being the largest party in the election. Costa held on to power after 2019 with the same supporting parties. He was first elected minister in the late 1990s under the then Prime Minister Antonio Guterres, currently Secretary General of the United Nations. Portugal has a, by European standards, liberal drug policy, having decriminalized possessions for personal use of all major drugs in 2001. Portugal joined the EU in 1986 and the Eurozone at its inception in the late 1990s. In the next and final video in this series, we will look closer at the nations in Western Europe.